Hey guys, Robbie here from CrossFit South Bend. Today we're gonna to try to answer the question, is dairy healthy? Uh, the answer we're gonna find is it really depends. It depends a lot on a lot of different factors, uh, what the source of the dairy is, what the quality of the, quality of the dairy is. Uh, it's gonna depend on what your health goals are, what your health history is like. Do you have an autoimmune condition? Do you have uh, blood sugar issues? Do you have digestive issues? A lot of different factors, so we're gonna to try to Help you answer the question is dairy healthy for you because it can be healthy for certain people but not necessarily for other people so we're going to try to figure out is it healthy for you so first let's talk about good dairy versus maybe not quite as good dairy or bad dairy so what tends to make dairy healthier uh, in general the following four factors are what makes dairy more healthy rather than less healthy first you want grass-fed dairy. Um, cows naturally eat grass. If you go to any other country on earth and you ask them what they feed their cows, they're gonna look at you funny because they probably feed their cows grass. It's only in the United States and certain other countries where we have started to feed cows corn over the past 50 years and sometimes things like stale candy. Uh, not good things for the cows and not good things for our health. Cows that are fed grass tend to have higher uh, you know, vitamin contents and mineral contents in their milk, in their meat, uh, things like that. So you want to make sure that you are having dairy, if you're having dairy from a source that is fully 100% grass fed. Full fat, believe it or not, full fat dairy is a lot healthier for you than non-fat or low fat dairy. The fat in dairy is where all the vitamins are, where all the fat soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K. Uh, that require fat for their absorption are in the dairy fat. Dairy fat is actually, as we'll talk about, the healthiest part or the healthiest component of dairy. So you want to have dairy that is full fat. You want to have dairy that's unhomogenized. This one isn't quite as important as the first two, but uh, homogenized dairy just means that it's been kind of all uh, passed through a filter so that it's all the same. You know, if you've ever talked to your grandparents about the milk deliveries they used to get, they say, oh, well, dairy, you know, the milk that they used to have, get had a cream top um, and had little bits of cream in it. The homogenization process uh, makes dairy a little bit harder to digest for some, for some people. So in general, you want to get it less processed and unhomogenized. And lastly, from a local family farm. Local family farm where the cows are eating what they need to be eating, they're not be giving they're not being given antibiotics, they're not eating stale candy, they're not in the feedlot under you know, these horrible conditions where they don't have any space. You want to get uh, your dairy from a local family farm. So to the extent that you can get cheese, milk, butter, yogurt, uh, etc., that meets one or more, uh, ideally all of these criteria, it's going to be better. Now, dairy that's not gonna be quite as good for you is gonna be dairy that is corn-fed as opposed to grass-fed. We talked about how that degrades the nutrient content. Uh, dairy that is low-fat versus non-fat. This has been the rage the past 30 years, and we've seen that it hasn't really helped our, our health too much. In fact, people are realizing today that low-fat and non-fat dairy is nowhere near as healthy as full-fat dairy. Uh, homogenized, and then from a feedlot, you know, from from a place where cows are given antibiotics because they're in such close quarters they, they can't uh, be there without getting sick. Um, so they need to be given antibiotics. So ideally cows that are kind of grazing the way they're supposed to be, eating what they're supposed to be, uh, leads to a better dairy experience. Now, let's talk a little bit about the components of dairy and whether, uh, you know, whether these things can be healthy for you or problematic for you. So uh, dairy, like most other foods, has some proteins, uh, some carbohydrates, and some fat. In the case of the proteins, two proteins that you'll probably be familiar with uh, from dairy are whey and casein. If you've ever done any um, uh, protein shakes, you'll probably be familiar with whey, whey protein shakes, and some of you might have taken uh, casein protein shakes as well. Whey and protein or whey and casein can be problematic for some people. In fact, casein uh, has a very similar molecular structure to uh, gluten, and one of the reasons why you hear a lot about uh, wheat-free, dairy-free, or gluten-free, dairy-free diets is because people who react to wheat tend to react to dairy as well, in particular the casein. So you could be uh, someone who's not lactose intolerant at all, and you could still react to dairy. If you've ever 
been someone who has reacted to cheese, for example, cheese has very little, uh, uh, to almost uh, zero lactose, and yet it's got a lot of casein, and what you're reacting to most likely when you eat cheese, if you react to it, is the casein. So you could still react to dairy and have a sensitivity to it, even if you are not lactose intolerant. So the proteins, depending on what kind of uh, digestive issues you have, or autoimmune issues, can be problematic. Carbs, there are lots of different carbs in dairy. The one, uh, sugar in particular, the one disaccharide that most people have heard about is lactose. Uh, the vast majority of the world, uh, actually, believe it or not, is lactose intolerant. It's only the descendants of uh, some Northern Europeans that have lactase persistence, which means that they have an enzyme that allows them to digest lactose. Um, even if you're not lactose intolerant, uh, lactose can sometimes be problematic and that can sometimes lead to gas and bloating because it's a harder sugar for some people to break down. Again, believe it or not, uh, dairy fat is the healthiest part of dairy. It's where all the fat soluble vitamins are. Uh, again, vitamins A, D, E, and K. So to the extent that you have dairy uh, that's going to be primarily fat from a good source as opposed to containing lots of proteins and carbs You're actually going to be better off health-wise. So let's talk about a few of those So here's a hierarchy of dairy in terms of uh, best health-wise to uh, Not not as good health-wise. So the best type of dairy by far is going to be the dairy that's got fat from a good healthy source but very little in the way of these carbs like lactose and proteins like whey and casein so what would fulfill that role? Things like uh, ghee, heavy cream, uh, butter. Butter has very little in the way of lactose, very little in the way of whey and casein. Uh, heavy cream has a little bit of lack, a little bit more lactose, a little bit more casein, but it's primarily dairy fat. If you've never heard of ghee before, that's okay. It's really just clarified butter. It's used a lot in French cooking uh, to cook uh, butter to a high heat without it burning. It's used a lot in Indian cooking. So ghee is just clarified butter. So uh, ghee even has less lactose and less whey and casein than, uh, than even butter. So it, usually most people who don't do well with dairy in general tend to do really well uh, with ghee. They, they tend not to have issues with that. Some okay options for you, uh, things like cheese, uh, yogurt, kefir, these are going to be more fermented dairy products that are going to have uh, especially if they're fermented correctly, they're going to have very little in the way of lactose, uh, but they are still going to be high in, in casein, in particular cheese is very high in casein. So if you react to cheese, chances are you're reacting to the casein. But these can be healthy if you tolerate them, assuming they come from a good source. Grass-fed, full-fat, unhomogenized from a local family farm, etc., etc. The worst, uh, I would say, from the dairy category is going to be corn-fed, uh, low fat slash non fat homogenized feedlot milk. And unfortunately, this is the milk that the vast majority of people tend to buy. This is the stuff that you can find at a gas station, that you find at most local grocery stores. You know, there are a few exceptions there, a uh, few exceptions now that try to offer healthier milks like uh, Trader's Point Creamery or Kelowna Supernatural. Um, but in general, most people who are buying milk are buying something like this. So if you want to have dairy, in general, these are going to be the best options from a health perspective, and then as you move down, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to have these be fully healthy for you. Now, let's talk about a question that I always get when people bring up the issue of dairy. They say, well, what about calcium? What am I supposed to do about calcium? Unfortunately, uh, women in particular have been kind of uh, told this repeatedly because of the high incidence of osteoporosis in America, that the only way for you to get uh, calcium is through dairy, and it's just not true. It's just 100% not true. Not only that, there are other factors that are even more important than how much calcium you have to your overall bone health. You can be consuming all the calcium you'd like, but if you don't have adequate levels of vitamin D, it's not going to matter. Vitamin D is way more important uh, than calcium from a health perspective and from a bone health perspective. Magnesium super important uh, from a health perspective, and one could argue really important for calcium absorption. Uh, are you strength training? Are you lifting heavy things from time to time? That's gonna do quite a bit more for your bone health than just taking a calcium su supplement. And the last thing to say is, excess calcium isn't just harmless. Excess ha calcium has been linked uh, with heart disease, uh, with heart attacks, 
uh, you know, your body only needs so much. It doesn't need excess amounts, these mega doses of calcium that some people have been given. So calcium is good, calcium is healthy. You can get lots of calcium from leafy greens. Uh, you can get it from things like sardines and mackerel. Uh, you can get it from things like uh, chicken stock. You know, if you make homemade chicken stock with bones and vegetables and stuff like that, there are plenty of other places to get calcium uh, that are perfectly healthy for you. Uh, besides dairy and those places like chicken stock and sardines and mackerel and leafy greens don't contain uh, the potentially problematic things like casein and lactose like dairy does so it's just 100% not true that dairy is the only place to get calcium uh, and even if it were true uh, there are lots of other factors that are really important to your bone health like vitamin D magnesium and strength training so those are important things to keep in mind so We've talked about a lot of different things here. Uh, let's try to figure out and condense. Let's try to figure out, is dairy right for you? Is dairy something that you should be consuming? So the headline that you should remember here is dairy can be healthy for someone if it's well tolerated. What does well tolerated mean? It means that you don't have uh, symptoms that come about as a result of dairy. Uh, it means that you don't get any sort of gas or bloating or indigestion uh, in terms of digestive symptoms as a result of consuming dairy. A lot of people have issues uh, with acne uh, as a result of dairy. They, their skin breaks out. Sometimes people feel like they get a really stuffy nose uh, or their eyes start to water, kind of uh, an allergic type reaction uh, when they consume dairy. Um, if you have an autoimmune condition, it can flare, dip, it can flare that up as well. So uh, if you don't fall into one of those categories where it's giving you symptoms, then in general, dairy can be healthy if it comes uh, from a place where it's grass-fed, full-fat, unhomogenized, and from a local family farm, and to the extent that you tend to be consuming uh, more dairy fat rather than things that contain uh, more dairy proteins and, and carbs. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight into whether dairy is right for you. This is Robbie from CrossFit South Bend signing off and we'll see you guys next time.